How's it going everybody? It's Rosie here for Astrophysography. In today's video, I'm going to show you a way of reducing star sizes using GIMP. When I made my first GIMP editing tutorial, which you can find in the description below, I didn't know how to do this. I've now found a way of doing it. I'm about to share it with you. So open your images into GIMP if you want to follow along or just carry on watching. And here we go. Here we are on GIMP, and this is a narrowband image of the Seda and the surrounding Butterfly Nebula region. I'm going to show you on this one and with a HARGB composite of the Horsehead Nebula. So first of all, let's begin with the narrowband image of Seda and the Butterfly Nebula. The first thing I always do when I'm about to do a star reduction is I duplicate my layer so I can get before and after and do any further blending I need to do. So in GIMP, what we're going to do is go to Layer and then Duplicate Layer. And down here, I'm going to call the bottom layer if it were type, I'm going to call this star reduction base and I'm going to call the top layer the star reduction layer. Now with the star reduction layer selected we're going to go to tools, selection tools and color select. I don't use fuzzy select because fuzzy select is good for selecting large patches connected to each other so a background sky, this nebulosity, I would use fuzzy select for that. If I'm trying to select a specific color or just the highlights, for example, as with stars, I'm going to use color select. We're going to go to the tool options here on the left hand side. If this isn't showing for you, go to Windows, Dockable Dialogues, Tool Options. This is also where you would find the histogram, which is here, if you don't have it showing already. So in the tool options, I left all this stuff default and I changed the threshold. In my case, I'm using threshold 35. I just kind of know this is good for my images. A bit of trial and error is needed. What threshold does, it will take your sampled color. So in this case, say, well, sampled luminosity in this case. So it's got a value of 50, an arbitrary value of 50. So 35 threshold is basically going to select. So the threshold of 35 is going to select the 50 down to 15 and up to 85. That's the easiest way I can describe what I understand threshold as. It's just how much of each side do you want to add into the selection. So with the threshold of 35 and color select, I'm going to just zoom in here to a bright star and I'm going to click it. And as you can see, it's now drew a marquee around all the stars and all the details that have that same value plus the threshold. So what I mean by that is, for example, if we go to the nebulosity here, you can see I selected the star but not the nebulosity. I'm going to deselect this selection by going to select and none. Or you could use control, shift and A on the computer, on the PC. With color select, let's bump the threshold up to 90. I'm going to show you what happens. Go select the star, and it's now selected all this nebulosity as well. Because even though you can physically see this nebulosity is dimmer than this star, the threshold has made it get included into the selection. And the same is applied for up here as well. All this has been selected, and don't know about you, I don't want that. So again, I'm going to just deselect this by going select and none or control shift and A and then I'm going to put my threshold back down to 35 again like I said I use a bit of trial and error and I know 35 is about where I want to be I'm going to select the star with the threshold of 35 on the star reduction layer and here we go this hasn't selected any detail that I want to keep Right, it hasn't selected any nebulosity or anything that I don't want to put this effect on. However, I don't want it to minimize SADA. So to remove things from the selection, go up here to your free select tool and hold control. And I believe this will be command on a Mac, but there's a button that removes from selection. So hold control, click and drag around what you'd want to deselect. Complete the selection, press enter. And now Seda has been removed from our selection. 
If you want to do the same with the sprite style, for example, you could, but I'm going to leave that in and let that get affected by the star reduction. Right, I'm going to zoom back in this patch of bright stars here because this is going to make it easier just for me to demonstrate what's going on. What we now need to do, we need to expand our selection and then we need to feather the selection. If you don't do the feathering, you're going to have a really hard edge on your star, on your star reduction and it's not going to look the way I, I think you're hoping it to. So first of all, we're going to expand our selection, right? So we're going to go up here to select and grow. And I'm going to grow this by about five. The amount you grow it by depends on your image scale as well as other factors like how magnified your image is, for example, or just generally the size of the stars. But usually because you've done a color select, which will select most of the airy disk of a star, the expand should be fine. Just you don't normally need to go nuts with it. So I think this is actually quite too much. So I'm going to just press control and shift to undo and go back in my history. You also history is up here. But yeah, I think that was a bit too much. So I'm just going to grow, grow it by, by three. I'm going to see what three looks like. This looks much better. It's not selected so much of the sky behind it. This one, I wish it had selected a bit more. If you wanted to, you could deselect that, run the patch on the smaller stars, and then come back and use a smaller threshold and do this star in separately afterwards. But for the sake of tutorial, I'm just going to press on. Now we need to feather this. For growing the selection, we need to feather the selection now. And to feather, go to select and feather. Now I'm going to select, I'm going to feather by five again. Practice with this, play around with it, get a feeling what you know good for. A bigger feather is going to, con going to co contract the selection more, but it will make your edges softer. There's a balancing game here. So I'm going to feather by five. And here's our image at the minute. A lot of dance, a lot of marching ants everywhere. And now, and now for the actual star reduction. So again, with the star reduction layer selected, I'm going to go to filters, distorts, value propagate. Value propagate is basically the minimum maximum filters used in Photoshop. And to reduce the star size, we want to use the mode and click more black. And you can probably immediately see what's just happened. So if I switch the preview off, and the preview back on, much nicer. And you can play around with this by adjusting the lower threshold, which is a bit hit and miss, as you can see here, especially it's leaving a halo around the star. So I normally leave these upper, th upper threshold is also the same. And propagating rate is what I'd probably use to control the intensity of the reduction. The default value is 0, 1, and 1. With all these selected, I usually find works just fine. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to deselect this selection by going to Select and None. And we're going to zoom out and see what's happened. Again, one of the beauties of having the two layers now is I can see the before and after. So this was before, and this is after. And I think the after is much better. I think that the star reduction, especially in this image, has really made the nebula punch out. It's, it's took a lot of distractions away from the image without removing the stars. So this kind of looks a bit cluttered to me, but this looks much cleaner, much easier to see the main subject of the image, which was the nebulosity and the star seder. If this isn't to your taste, you can then use your opacity slider to blend it and adjust just how much. It gives you real fine control about how much reduction you're doing. But for me with this picture, 100% opacity, complete star reduction. I'm very happy with that. I think that looks really good. Okay, now I'm going to show you what to do on a HARGB image, for example. And this would be accurate for a HARGB image, a SHO narrowband image like a Hubble palette, or an LRGB 
mono image comprised like a color picture made with the mono filtered LRGB. The main thing is I would do the star reduction layer after I've made the composite. So after I've put the hydrogen alpha layer into the color picture, after I've got all three narrowband SHO lined up where they want to be and editing as one whole image, after I've put the LRGB image together, I would select the master of that image and then make the adjustments to that. Purely because if you start adjusting star sizes on different layers individually, different channels, you could end up with almost a chromatic aberration look where stars are different sizes, so different colors are poking out and they're not making the correct star color. So when, I, when I'm doing composite images, I do a star reduction after I've made the composite. So here we are with the HARGB composite image of the Horsehead Nebula. And just like before, I'm going to go to Layer and Duplicate Layer. I'm going to call the bottom layer the Star Reduction. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Star Reduction, sorry, Star Reduction Base. And I'm going to call the top layer the Star Reduction. And then just like before, I'm going to go to Tools, Selection Tools, Color Select. I'm going to make sure the Star Reduction layer is selected. Threshold 35 mm, might be different for this image, we'll see. Click a nice bright star. And here we go, all these small stars. You can see this is what I was on about. I didn't do a very good job making this comp composite, if I'm honest. You can see this sort of chromatic aberration look. That was just me failing to line things up properly. Now, in this image, it's selected nebulosity. It's selected here on the Horsehead Nebula. It's selected some in the Flame Nebula. These two little nebulas here as well, and some bright stars. So I'm gonna to go to my free select tool again, and just like in the SATA picture, I'm gonna zoom in. I don't want this nebulosity picking, so hold control, and just draw around what you don't want to be selected. What's going on with the mouse, sir? Complete that selection, press enter. You might notice there's a small star in here. Well, a pretty large star, to be honest. Um, you could try and draw that out and paint that a marquee around that yourself. I don't want to. Um, for the sake of tutorial. You see the star here? You could try and draw another marquee around it if you wanted to minimize it. I'm going to leave it as is, mainly for the sake of tutorial. Uh, I want to obviously leave... I want to leave Alan Attack, this star, this star, this one, this one these nebulas and obviously the flame only the untouched so I'm just gonna make those adjustments now so just drawing around them holding control and then pressing enter all right here we go made all the I've adjusted the selection as I want to deselected the things I needed to deselect so just like before we need to expand it and then feather it so go up to select and grow. I'm going to again grow by about three. And then I want to go to select and feather. And again, I'm going to feather by about five. I kind of know that's a sweet point for my equipment and my imaging is kind of where I like it to be for my workflow. Feel free to copy those settings if you want to, if it works for you. But I encourage you to have a bit of a play around and see what works best for you. Again, now we're ready, we're gonna to go to Filters, Distorts, and Value Propagate. Zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. More black. Can turn the filter on, the preview on and off to see what's going on. Yeah, okay. And then you can just adjust the intensity using the propagate rate. For this image, I think 0.6 works well. Or I can just turn it all the way up and I'll use opacity to check it. I'm going to deselect my selection again, select none. And zoom out, see what's happened. So this is before and this is after. Again, I think it just kind of removes the overall 
luminosity, intensity of the image and just leaves a really nice punchy DSO. And like before, if you're not really fond of it, if it's too strong, you can use the opacity blender. But I find, I find volume propagate to work really well in GIMP. Sometimes with Photoshop, I need to do different opacities and things like that, or multiple passes to get where I want to, but I find value propagate works really well in GIMP, so I love it for that. But yeah, there you go. Two images and two different results using the same technique. I think it's a really simple technique that adds a lot to an image because it just removes the overall brightness of an image from the stars and makes it, puts them there, they're still there. They just kind of take a back seat punches out the detail of the deep sky object, the nebula of the galaxy, for example. Thanks very much for watching everybody. I hope this tutorial has been really helpful for you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, you know what to do. And consider subscribing for more tutorials such as this for GIMP and other softwares. So I hope you go forward. I hope this has been really helpful for you. And I hope to see you implementing this into your next images. Let me know how it's gone in the comments down below. And until next time, clear skies, keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. See you later.